Wind, rain, and snow finally returns to Northern California at the Blanco Lirio Global World Headquarters. It's Saturday, the 1st of December, and today we have some aviation news to discuss. So yesterday, Friday, 30 November, Frontier Flight 9260 had their cowling open up on takeoff on a flight from Las Vegas to Tampa. My name is Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. I'm currently a first officer on the 777 aircraft, but the last aircraft I flew before getting checked out in the 777 was the Airbus A320 series of aircraft. One of the things I did in my aviation career was right after high school, I went to A&P school, aircraft and power plant mechanics school, two-year program right down there at Sacramento City College in Sacramento, California. A great addition to your flying ratings, especially for those of you that are getting started in aviation. Not only are we going to need, there's an extreme shortage of pilots right now, we're going to need all manners, all of, uh, of technicians throughout the entire aviation field. Though the pictures circulating on the internet are rather alarming looking, this is nothing like what Southwest Airlines recently experienced. This was not a uncontained engine failure of any sort. This was simply a cowling failure, probably ultimately will be determined to be a human failure to properly latch the cowling before takeoff. But there's nothing wrong with the engine underneath the cowling of this Frontier flight. By the way, this is the same engine, the CFM 56 series engine, that the Boeing 737s use. However, the engine nacelles are different between the Boeing aircraft and the Airbus aircraft. So let's go inside where it's a little bit warmer and check out these Airbus cowlings a little more closely. As an air crew member, you're the last link in the chain of safety to make sure that things like engine cowling latches are closed. Usually this job falls on the shoulders of the first officer, the three striper, to go out there in that freezing cold weather and do that pre-flight and make sure those engine latches are closed. The extent of knowledge about engine latches as an air crew member is basically the location of the latches and that they need to be closed. They must be closed. You as an aircraft member are not supposed to close latches or mess with latches and certainly not open latches and look inside of uh, various inspection panels. That's maintenance, maintenance's job. If you as an air crew member see a latch that looks open, unlatched, or not properly set, you simply tell maintenance and have them deal with it. When you listen to the ATC audio tapes of the flight, I'll give you a link to VASA Aviation. They do a great job of, of publishing these. <laughs> You'll hear two distinctly different um, crew voices on the tape. The first crew member you'll hear talking to ATC is a somewhat rattled, uh, sounds like a younger male uh, talking on the radio. And then the second crew member you'll hear uh, a female crew member just as cool as a cucumber as they bring the aircraft around back in and land uneventfully. <laughs> I can only imagine that the slightly rattled first voice was that of the three striper first officer wondering if that responsibility, if he had remembered to check those cowling latches, if it's his responsibility that all this is going to come down upon. As uh, a common phrase said at our hearing, <laughs> As a common phrase said at our airline, your hearing will improve at the hearing with the NTSB and the FAA. Here's the Las Vegas airport diagram, 10-9 page from the Jeppesons. Departing Las Vegas to the west, there's two parallel runways, 26 right and 26 left. 26 right being the inner uh, runway, the longer runway, the runway typically used for takeoff. That's where these guys departed from. And apparently, as soon as they took off, this cowling blew open and left pieces on the runway, and that was being reported to them as they, shortly after takeoff. So, as is commonly briefed before every takeoff, we brief the emergency procedures that we're going to apply for this particular takeoff. It's a very common and a common briefing item to discuss if we have an engine failure on takeoff and fought out the runway 
foreign object damage. If something happens with the engine that leaves a lot of debris on the runway, we don't want to come back around and land on that same runway and drive through that debris field. So we'll brief and plan what other runway are we going to land on. And uh, typically there's two parallel runways and these guys did just that. They came around and landed on the, on the left runway. Two six left. Now on social media, the passengers are getting shamed somewhat for uh, ho for s hollering "stop, stop, stop!" the aircraft, as most people would would uh, assume that the aircraft is already in the air. And of course, unlike a, a car, when your hood flies off, you're not just going to pull over and stop. You got to come around, back around, and land. However, if this happened right on takeoff, as soon as they applied full power and that cowling blew apart and those passengers saw it, well then, yes, the crew did have an opportunity to stop the aircraft and not take off. Remember, every single takeoff on these uh, two engine airliners is engineered down to within 2,000 pounds of the weight and within a couple of degrees of the actual outside air temperature. <clears throat> Each it takeoff is designed such that if an engine fails, at V1, the takeoff decision speed, that aircraft can safely climb out, go around the pattern on the remaining one engine, come around and land in the remaining distance of the runway. So between the time it takes to push up the throttles and reach V1, somewhere around 120 knots or so, 130 knots on an on a Airbus type aircraft, you have enough runway to get the aircraft stopped. So if you knew that your cowling had flown open, you would be able to get the aircraft stopped in the remaining amount of runway. However, there's no cowling open indication light on any of these aircraft. These cowlings are designed to be closed and latched and secured from, from maintenance and, and that's the end of that story. If you had a thrust reverser unlocked indication, that's a whole nother story. Every time you push up the throttles to take off, a takeoff warning system does a series of tests and makes sure everything is sorted out in proper order and proper configuration before you take off. Otherwise, you're going to get a massive warning and you're just going to retard the throttles right there and straighten out whatever it is that you forgot to set correctly for takeoff. Remember, too, you cannot see the engines from the cockpit. They're simply too far behind you. Taking out a taken off out of Las Vegas. Uh, Las Vegas is surrounded by higher terrain. There is a, uh, for our company, there is a engine failure procedure which takes you around a right hand pattern to avoid high terrain with the reduced performance of one engine. This crew was already taken off and beginning their departure to the left when they finally figured out what was going on with their aircraft and just continued a left-hand pattern back around and landed. Remember this engine had not failed so they're still producing thrust from that engine though it may be a considerable reduced amount of thrust with the cowling wide open the way it is or was and continue to come back around and land uneventfully. Let's take a closer look at these cowlings. Let's now see the opening of the fan cowl door. So these engines are very low to the ground as you can see here so you really got to bend over to check out the position of these latches to make sure they are correctly closed one two three of them right down the center line of the engine correction four of them manually lift and support the door at lower edge this is the fan doors they're fairly lightweight and you can just pick them up like that release the front hold open rod from its storage bracket these are the doors on the Frontier flight that appear to have come apart. Here's what the doors open. Quite large. Now to open up the thrust reverser doors, the first thing you got to do is lock out, mechanically lock out or hydraulically lock out the thrust reversers themselves. Then it's quite an elaborate operation to get the thrust reverser doors open and these are big heavy doors and here's the series of latches that need to be opened to open the thrust reverser doors and one way up in there
These are old Airbus training videos, maintenance training videos. And these doors are pulled tight with this nut. Now these doors are so big and heavy that you got to use hydraulic pressure to pump them open. We use a, or they use a hydraulic, what we call a hydraulic mule or a portable hydraulic pump, in this case a hand pump, to provide the pressure to open the doors. Now the reason these doors are so big and heavy is they contain the thrust reverser mechanism, the doors, and the what they call the C ducts, or the ducts right here, where the high bypass air flows through the engine around the inner core of the engine. And this is what provides probably 80% of your thrust for these engines. Is the air flowing through the high bypass turbofans around the inner core. So without these ducts in place, you're losing a tremendous amount of thrust and efficiency out of those engines. Not to mention the tremendous amount of drag that having these doors open would produce. So here on the incident aircraft, we can see the fan doors open and busted off and the thrust reverser, the big heavy thrust reverser doors, both of them wide open and hanging onto the aircraft. The big hazard here is not the loss so much the loss of thrust and the increased drag of this, but if one of these big heavy pieces comes off and strikes the airframe, the wing, or particularly the horizontal stabilizer of the aircraft, that could lead to catastrophic failure and loss of control of the aircraft. For maintenance purposes, these these uh, thrust reverser doors are only rated to 45 knots when you're working on the aircraft having those doors open. Uh, don't open these doors in any greater wind of 45 knots, but here they are hanging on as they fly all the way around the pattern. And here they are after they land, the doors, the inboard doors fall back into position and you can see the missing part of the forward door. Here's the thrust reversers on the CFM on the CFM 56 engines designed by the old aviation company Hispano Suiza. Of course those doors help reverse the flow and slow the airplane. Though the Boeing 737 uses the same engine, they use a completely different reverser blocker door arrangement reverse the thrust on these engines. This allows greater ground clearance with these low slung engines. Here's the new 737 MAX demonstrating their thrust reversers. You know, you can't see them very well from here, but you can see it's pretty effective when he honks on it here. And you can see that there is plenty of clearance. There's no doors hanging out to uh, re further reduce the ground clearance. And you can see how low to the ground these new large high bypass engines are on the 737 MAX. Now this has certainly not been the first time this has been a problem with cowling doors opening up. And in fact, the FAA came out with the airworthiness directive, I think back around 2007, regarding ensuring that these latches are latched on the cowling doors and the NTSB came up with the recommendation that maintenance procedurally procedurally has two people two sets of eyes independently confirm that the latches are properly closed and sign off the logbook and then finally the last link of that chain is the person doing the pre the pilot doing the pre-flight of the aircraft ensure that all those latches are closed so the questions that will need to be answered is, um, uh, of course, who did the last maintenance on that aircraft? I wonder, was the thrust reverser um, locked out? Was it tagged out? It's not uncommon to fly with a thrust reverser locked out. It's noted in the logbook and you just make additional um, allowances for your takeoff and landing distances for having one thrust reverser locked out. 
What about the flaps coming back around for landing? When you come back around to land in this configuration, it appears to me that the leading edge slats, which are the first thing to start moving on the wing when you go to lower the flaps for landing, those leading edge slats are going to come forward and bang into those open thrust reverser doors. I wonder if they came in there and crushed those doors. If anybody has any pictures uh, after they landed of any of the damage, what it looks like there, it'd be very interesting to find out what happened there. The crew got it sorted out in fairly short order, just continued around downwind and back around and landed all within about 15 minutes. So I'm looking forward to the rest of this story and find out how this played out. Good job by the crew members and everybody involved getting this aircraft and all their passengers safely back on the ground in a timely fashion. See you here. Check those latches. and that cowling blew apart and those passengers saw it well then yes the crew did have an opportunity to stop the aircraft and not take off let me get that where you at yeah that's just typical typical airbus pilot did not know anything where uh where are you are you working today yeah i just got to la uh okay oh back home you're heading home then uh, no, I'm going to work. Oh, going to work. Okay. Uh, Las Vegas with the cowling flying open. Um, as I recall in the Airbus, there is no cowling open indication no, light. Uh, what happened? I, I haven't heard anything. <laughs> the internet's been out for days. He's always, you're always right on top of it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, I've only got one thing to say. I only got one thing to say. Check your goddamn cowling latches before you take off, or make yeah. sure your FO does. I know you Did just. They exit? Do they what? They, uh, Did they exit the airframe? Yeah, well, no, they didn't. Well, part of the forward cowling. Uh, uh, forward cowling hatch doors it looks like part of them did exit the aircraft but that's my airbus buddy joe he's at home raising three dollars uh, three daughters so he has no idea what's going on out here in the world <laughs> joe <laughs>